praise. Hallelujah. Why don't you open up your mouth and give him some praise? Hallelujah. If he, never, if he never does another thing for you in this life, you are still indebted to him. He's that good. Oh, come on. He woke you up this morning. He woke me up this morning and started us on our way. We have a, a lot to give God thanks for. Hallelujah. Jesus, we honor you. We bless your name. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to be in your house and the opportunity to praise you, to lift our voice and to sing and to give you praise. We don't take this for granted, God, but we thank you, Jesus. Come on. We have an opportunity to lift our hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to take that right? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I will not be numbered with the ungrateful. God has been too good to me. Hallelujah. I've got to give him praise. Come on, take your praise a little higher. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Jesus, no rock is going to take my place, but I'm going to bless his name. Hallelujah. I give him praise. I give him praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is so good to be in the presence of the Lord today. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Praise the Lord. It's a good thing to be in the house. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know time is far spent, and um, I, I won't be uh, very long, Lord's willing. Um, but uh, if you have your Bibles, and I'm going to go directly into the Word, uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, I want to greet our pastor and first lady in the name of Jesus. I also honor Bishop Rig and Lady Rig. Um, I greet you in Jesus' name, and I also want to greet uh, Sister Maxine and Sister Debbie and Mother Guthrie in Jesus' name. When I, when I was growing up, I just want to say I, I honor uh, Sister Guthrie. When I was growing up, there were very few women um, preachers, and uh, Sister Guthrie was a fierce forced to be to contend with in the pulpit and I learned a lot from her and she has been such a blessing to me over the years and uh, I, I'm so glad to have her here today and uh, I greet Bishop in his absence I know he wanted to be here uh, today and unfortunately he hasn't he's not he's not able to be here but uh, there were, um, that I can recall, uh, three uh, bishops that uh, have blessed my life significantly. Bishop Rigg, of course, and um, Bishop Guthrie, and also uh, Bishop Stewart in uh, Miami, Florida, who they all opened up their pulpit to me, a woman, and they have done much to further uh, women in the pulpit, and I am very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for that, and I and I honor all of them, and uh, it's it's a blessing to to be able to minister the word of God, and I count it an honor, Pastor, to stand here, and uh, it's um, I can tell you that one of the things uh, when I was growing up, and you know before I started ministering the word, and there was just this burning in my heart to 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 to, to preach the word, but. 
I didn't know how and, and what to do. And there was just something. And I would try. And I remember being in school and having to study for a test. But I couldn't study for the test because I had this burning word in me. And this is one of the things that when you're called, no one has to tell you you're called. Because God begins to speak to you and deal with you in the midnight hour. And it wasn't long before, you know, I would wake up early in the morning and go down into my basement to pray. I don't even know if my, my mom knows that I, I did that. But you, you had to have that connection with God. And I'm so glad that there were those in leadership who acknowledged that call. And so we want to pray for our young people that that call that God has on their life, that they respond to it and do what God has called them to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So very quickly, if you would turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37, just reading a few verses of scripture, I am going to try and uh, f uh, complete by, by one o'clock. I, I hope I won't be much longer than that. Um, and just reading, I will read in your hearing those uh, verses of scripture. I, but before we read it, I do want to say that I was very blessed to be in the Ontario uh, District Ladies Conference this past weekend. It was a blessing. I don't know, was there any ladies that were there? Praise the Lord. I was uh, blessed to be there. And we didn't just shout, but we got good word to come home and chew on and meditate on. And uh, what I've learned more than anything is that we're all connected by one spirit. And that spirit, it operates in us and through us when we're part of the body of Christ. And the, the theme of the women's conference this year was dream. And um, I didn't know it. But, you know, talking about dreams and don't let your dreams die. And in preparing to, to minister today, I didn't realize when I went to the conference that that was the topic and the theme. And, and But hearing the word of God over this weekend, it was a confirmation in my spirit um, as I feel led to minister today. So by faith, I'm going to go with God and do what I believe that he's laid on my heart. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. Reading in uh, e Ezekiel 37, verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there, was, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone upon his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army." 
Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, your anointed word. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would have your own way in this place. I pray, Lord God, that you would position us to receive whatever you would have to do in this place. We will not fail to give you the highest praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, amen, amen. So be it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord while you're sitting. If you can turn to your neighbor and tell them, stay the course. The text we read today is very familiar, at least to me. The vision of the Valley of Dry Bones is a prophecy that revealed, that was revealed to the prophet Ezekiel, conveying an experience of seeing him standing in a valley that was full of dry human bones. He's commanded to prophesy to those bones and to prophesy to the wind. And before his eyes, he hears a noise and a shaking and he experiences that shaking and, and the bones start to connect to one another. And before you know it, it's not just bones that are in the valley, but in fact, those bones come together and create human figures. And the bones, as they're coming together, sinew or tendons is added to those bones. And then upon the sinew or the tendons is added flesh. Then on the flesh is added skin. And then those bodies form, the Bible says, an exceeding great army. And then God, he does the part where he adds life to that army. He breathes into them and what was dead has become alive. When you read further in the text, God reveals that the bones represents the people of Israel in a desperate and forlorn state and condition. Their hope was lost. They weren't in the place that they should have been. And so the Lord commands the prophet when he's explaining and talking about what the prophet is seeing in the valley. And now there's this exceeding great army that is standing there, the Lord commands Ezekiel to prophesy in order to revitalize these human figures, to resurrect them and to bring them to the land of Israel. And there is a message here for the modern day saint because if we're honest with one another today, we all go through a valley of dry bones experience at one time or another. Sometimes we find ourselves uh, drawn away uh, by the Lord into uh, a valley of solitude uh, where we find ourselves uh, surrounded by what looks like uh, discarded dreams uh, and unfulfilled uh, promises. Uh, dreams that might not have materialized when we hoped that they would. And so we abandon those dreams uh, as extra weight or baggage. We give up on those dreams and those desires that the Lord himself has dropped into our spirit because they don't happen in our timeline. They don't happen when we hope that they will. And so we lose hope like Israel did. We let go of our desires that God has put in our heart. But because we, we don't see anything and we don't see the evidence of the materialization of those dreams, we bury those dreams. We lay those dreams in graves of unfulfillment, graves of disappointment, graves of unbelief, and graves of doubt. And those dreams get locked in. They are tied up and they are shut down. We move on and we forget about the promises.
is that God has given us. Someone needs to be encouraged today to know that God wants to open up those graves and breathe life into those dreams and breathe life into those desires because those dreams are the initial spark for discovering our purpose and walking in it. When God whispers that he loves us and he puts his desire in our heart, it's a ray of hope that helps us walk forward towards what God has in store. I remember a few years ago that I was praying about something with the Lord and I believed that he was going to do what he promised and I had prayed about it but I didn't see anything happening and then something happened that caused me to to go into a, a, a state of unbelief I, I doubt filled my heart and I said God I, I guess it's just not going to, to happen and and but I was so sure that it was something that God had given me uh, but over time uh, I, I lost hope and I was wondering God was it really you who spoke into my spirit and then I traveled to Quebec for a business trip and when I got there, I, I walked in the door and I met a colleague that I hadn't seen in over a year. And as soon as she saw me, she said to me, Tracy, I had a dream about you last night. And she told me about the dream. And the dream was exactly the thing that I had spoken to God about. Would you believe that the thing that I had been praying about in my prayer closet, just me and God, uh, somehow uh, God allowed uh, this to be a confirming word uh, through this individual. Uh, and she, as soon as she saw me, she just told me what she had seen in her dream. Ah, uh, uh, and so from that moment forward, uh, I decided that I was going to praise God uh, in anticipation uh, of what he was going to do. Uh, I knew that God was on the job. Uh, even though I didn't see anything happening, I couldn't sense that anything was happening. And it looked like I was in a valley full of dry bones. Nothing was connected together. Everything was in disorder. And it looked like there was no life there. It looked like I was in a cemetery where dead things are. But oh, God said the word and I received it with joy. And ever since that moment, I've been praising him ever since. Hallelujah. How many of us, God, how many of us know that God will use whomever he will to allow you to know that he is right here with you? Ah, you might say, I won't hear it unless he comes and speaks to me personally. And that's fine for you. But when God decides to show up, however he shows up, however he blesses me, I'll be satisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perhaps God has given you a glimpse of what he has in store for your life. He didn't show you everything, but you know that God has great plans for you. He, you know that where you are right now is not where you're going to end up. I, I wonder if I have a witness in the house. Woo! Hallelujah. When you're in that place, ah, sometimes it gets hard to push through the unbelief and the doubt. But I am here to tell you, if God said it, you can believe it, and it is so. I remember we started 2024 talking about purpose and knowing why we are here, and to live a life, the importance of living a life on purpose. 
And while we all need to, to live a life of purpose, sometimes it takes time for purpose to fully be realized in our lives. It takes experience. We oftentimes go through seasons of waiting, seasons of not exactly sure what is happening. And sometimes in our wait, we get a little impatient or we get a little tired. But we cannot afford uh, to live a life uh, without discovering uh, our purpose. Because living a life uh, without purpose uh, is not living at all. Uh, purpose uh, brings meaning to life itself. Uh, when we understand why we are here, uh, it undergirds us uh, and gives us the confidence uh, to walk by faith. Uh, it gives us the confidence uh, and the clarity of thought uh, and of vision. When we are purpose driven, we can tune out those who have nothing good to say. Ah, we can stay the course. Doesn't matter that so many people have negative things to say. When we have purpose and we live on purpose, we can decide to go through that which seems to be dead, that which seems to be discarded. We can hold on to our dreams even though it seems like there is no life around. When we live on purpose, we can walk in faith and believe God for that which seems impossible. You see, when God works on our desires and gives us a dream, even if it's just a glimmer of hope, that hope can ignite our faith to walk forward in purpose. So we can't lose sight of our dreams. We must stay the course. Turn your to your neighbor and tell them, stay the course. God brings the prophet Ezekiel into a valley of dry bones. And in the end, there's an exceeding great army. We are admonished in scripture that the end of a thing is better than the beginning. The finish is better than the start. Especially when God is in control and we allow him to do things his way. Now, as humans, we are creatures of habit. And we learn things in life that progress in a certain way. Uh, we learn to normalize things. Uh, we are born into this world. We learn and we mature and, and then we die. And uh, the bones of a man are, are not uh, revealed uh, and seen until the end of life uh, when there's no breath uh, left in his body. Uh, yet in the text that we read uh, today, we start in a valley of dry bones and we end with an exceeding great army. This valley of dry bones was a mass grave of bones. And unless the Lord hastens his return, we will all go the way of the grave. The writer in Ezekiel 37 starts in a grave, uh, but ends up in the presence uh, of a vibrant, mighty army that is full of life. Uh, what was dead uh, has come to life uh, because God showed up. The end was better and greater than the beginning. See, because God is God, uh, he can transform uh, a dead situation uh, and bring it to life uh, and make it great. Uh, somebody needs to hear that. Uh, you're standing in the middle of a dead situation. Uh, don't know how, uh, don't know when, uh, don't even know uh, where you're going. Uh, and your head might be spinning around uh, and all you see is dead. Uh, all you see is uh, dying. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, when God gets in the middle uh, of a dead situation. Uh, your end can be greater uh, than your beginning. Uh, you just need to praise him in advance. Uh, you need to praise him on credit. Uh, you need to praise him like it's already done. Uh, you need to give God praise uh, in your situation. 
I wonder if I have a witness in this house. God can turn it around. I'm not just talking about something I read in a book. I'm here as a testimony to let you know God can turn a dead situation into life. Jesus. Oh, you see your bones. Oh, you see it death and dying. And you're wondering where God is in that situation. I'm reminded of the account of when Elisha died. And they buried him in a sepulcher. And another man died and they were in the process of, of, of having a burial for that man, the, the Bible says. But they saw the enemy. The Moabites were approaching. And so in haste, what they did is they threw that dead man into the grave of Elisha. And when he touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. Ah, in the middle of death, God caused there to be life. When there should have been death, there was life. Ah, that's just the way God does it sometimes. You are trying to understand what God is doing. And God does not need us to understand. He needs us to trust trust him he needs us to walk by faith you don't have to understand every step of the way but you do need to say Lord I trust you I might not understand everything don't know where the provisions coming from don't have the wisdom don't have the knowledge but God I trust you to bring me to a better end I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, uh, to give you an expected end. Hallelujah. You see, when God gives life uh, to your purpose and your dreams, uh, and he brings you out with a mighty deliverance, uh, he deserves uh, the glory and the honor. Uh, uh, there are certain things, our God is gracious, uh, but there are certain things that our God will not share. Uh, he will not share uh, his glory with another. Uh, so you got to understand and know uh, that when God decides uh, to breathe on your valley uh, of death, dry bones you better give him praise you better open up your mouth and begin to praise praise our God he can bring life in a dead 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 situation I'm not saying half dead I'm saying totally dead I'm saying no life I'm saying uh, no skin, uh, no flesh, uh, no sinew, uh, but just dry bones. Uh, God can bring life out of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel, understand, Ezekiel didn't just wander into a valley of dry bones. The Bible said that the hand of the Lord carried him there and set him down in the middle of a valley. Whether he wanted to be there or not, that is where God brought him. So it was in that valley uh, uh, that he began to describe uh, what he saw. And he saw this valley of bones. We can't live without bones. You consider your frame. We are here today and I are able to stand and move because we have a, a skeletal system running through our body. Bones are integral to the body structure. And so bones are important. It's very important to have the bones in our body. They're integral to the body's structure, making them indispensable to life and well-being. And while bones don't look like an exceeding great army, bones can be the start of something great. Scattered bones uh, is all that Ezekiel saw. When the Lord 
asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel answered, Lord, you know. And the Lord tells him to prophesy to those bones. And I'm almost through. Uh, while it might be difficult uh, for Ezekiel uh, to see what God is seeing, uh, he is obedient uh, and begins uh, to prophesy to the bones. Uh, I cannot overemphasize uh, the importance uh, of obedience. Uh, we need to obey the word of God. Ah, uh, uh, when the word of God speaks to us uh, we have got to obey uh, like I said uh, you don't have to understand everything uh, but you got to obey uh, I heard the song man say uh, trust and obey uh, there is no other way uh, to be happy in Jesus uh, we have got to learn to obey hallelujah so we prophesied things to the bones and as he was obedient and prophesied, things began to happen. Even though he might not have understood what was happening, uh, he prophesied in faith uh, as he was commanded, uh, and things uh, began to come together. Uh, things began to shift in place. Ah, uh, where there had been just bones, ah, uh, uh, the bones began to build upon bones, uh, and uh, things began to take shape. Uh, what was just bones uh, turned into bodies, uh, and those bodies became. Uh, a mighty army that God breathed on. Ah, oh, my friend, we have got to walk in faith and move through the valley that sometimes God takes us through. The valley is not a place to fear. It is not a place to ignore or avoid because it is in the valley that we experience God in a meaningful and in a personal way way. It is in the valley that God can restore you. It is in the valley that you can get a renewed vision. It is in your valley that God can revive dead dreams and desires. It is a place of solitude away from the busyness of life and a time that God takes a side with just you and him. So man says, and he leads me beside still waters somewhere in the valley below. He draws me aside to be tested and tried, but it's in the valley. It's in the valley. Somebody needs to hear that. It's in the valley. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Why? Because Jehovah Shammah is with me. The Lord is with me. You don't have to fear. God is with us in the valley. And it's oftentimes in the valley that dreams are important. There is a time that when God, he inspires us and just gives us a glimpse of what's in store for your life. But because uh, we don't see things with our natural eyes, we stop looking for it. We stop believing God for it. We stop exercising faith and then we turn around and say, see, there's nothing happening. But those dreams, that glimpse that God has for us is a part of the form and structure. It looks like just like bones. But when God gets through with it, when he gets through with me, oh, you're not going to be able to recognize. I might just look like a skeletal structure right now. But when God gets through with bringing my dreams to pass, you're not going to believe it's me ah because when God breathes on that word and he breathes on my faith there's no telling what God can do can you stand at this time hallelujah when God puts a desire in a heart just trust him and be obedient I know it doesn't look like much right now. And you might feel 
that it's too much time that has passed. And it's not just bones, but it's very dry bones because nothing has happened for some time. But oh, my friend, uh, if you turn it over to the Lord uh, and begin to exercise faith uh, and say, God, I'm in the middle of uh, a valley of dry bones. Uh, I don't see much, don't feel much. Uh, but hey, when you begin to praise him uh, and worship him uh, and prophesy and say, God, uh, and when you start to be uh, able to declare some things uh, and begin to speak to that situation uh, that looks so dead. Uh, there's no telling what God will do, uh, but you got to stay the course. Uh, you've got to be invested. Uh, you got to do a buy-in. Uh, you can't just stand on the sidelines uh, and believe that God will work. Uh, you have got to do your part. And so I say, stay the course. See, when you say stay the course, what you're saying is I'm going to maintain the course or the plan that I have chosen. And, and you're going to stay on course. You're going to stay focused on where you're headed. And God desires uh, that each of us uh, fulfill the purpose that he had in mind uh, when he created us. But even that takes faith. You have got to be able to believe God. Even if you don't have somebody that is there beside you to encourage you along the way, uh, you have got to find it in yourself uh, like David did uh, and say, I will encourage myself in the Lord. Uh, you have got to be able to open up your mouth uh, and begin to praise him in spite of your circumstance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay the course. It is for us to stay the course. When we've done everything that we can, we need to have faith and belief that God will do the rest. We need to stay the course. I wonder if we could bow our heads at this time. The scripture says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. Stay the course. I just wanted to bring an encouraging word for someone where it looked like your dreams have been discarded and forgotten about. Stay the course. Give God praise. Even though you can't uh, seem to find any evidence that God is at work, stay the course. I wonder if there's someone who wants to exercise a step of faith and come forward to this altar and say, God, I'm going to stay the course. I'm in, I might be in a situation where there does not seem any life. And God, you're the only one that can deliver me in this situation. Lord, help me to stay the course. Lord, I need strength to stay the course. Lord, help me in my situation. Is there another that will come? We have to stay the course. It is time uh, to stay the course. Uh, hallelujah. Is there another that will come? Uh, it's time to stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course. Come on. Hallelujah. Is there another that will come? It's time. And when you take that walk of faith, it is a step of faith. Believing God. God sees it. He sees your faith. And in fact, he's given every man a, a measure of faith. So we all have at least a grain of mustard seed of faith today. I don't know what it is that might be your valley that you're in. I'm just here to tell you that I know a God that can deliver and that your end can be greater than your beginning if you begin to praise him. If you are already in the altar, I just want you to lift your hands and begin to thank him. Hallelujah. When you begin 
to thank him. Uh, hallelujah. That is prophetic. Uh, the situation hasn't changed as far as you know, uh, but you are uh, in a prophetic way. Uh, you're thanking God that he's already made a way uh, out of no way. Uh, ah, when you begin to praise him uh, and begin to thank him, uh, come on, begin to thank him. Uh, begin to thank him. Uh, ah, I know that sometimes uh, we have a way in which we expect God to work, uh, but I, before you even ask about anything, uh, I want you to thank him. Uh, send up an offering of thanksgiving. Uh, let's fill this house uh, with gratitude. Uh, ah, let's fill it with gratitude. Uh, begin to thank God. Uh, begin to thank him uh, for what he's already done. You don't see it. Uh, you can't sense it. Uh, you don't feel a shaking. Uh, you don't see any moving. Uh, ah, but I serve a God of uh, the valley of dry bones uh, that can turn it into a great uh, exceeding army. Uh, begin to thank him. Uh, begin to thank him. Uh, begin to thank him. Uh, if you are in uh, the audience uh, uh, and you don't have anything to thank God for, uh, would you stretch your arms out towards those uh, who have stepped forward in faith uh, and begin to pray uh, for these uh, that they get what they receive from God. Uh, uh, that the dream that God has given them, uh, that the desire that God has given them, uh, that the purpose that God has reserved for them uh, will come to pass. Uh, ah, stay the course. Uh, stay the course. Uh, stay the course. Come on. Uh, begin to thank him. Uh, thank him. Hallelujah. Do we have any altar workers that can help us today? Hallelujah. Stay the course. Hallelujah. When you wake up on Monday, stay the course. When you wake up on Tuesday, stay the course. If it's six months from now, stay the course. Come on. Begin to thank him. Come on. Begin to thank him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's as easy as that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Praise him in advance. Advance. Praise him in advance. Uh, hallelujah. In expectation. Uh, hallelujah. Give him a, pr a praise that's anticipatory. Uh, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.